Hello YouTube, it's your boy, The Crow Show, home of the smoothest voice on Twitch. In today's video, we're going to go through my beginner's guide series, where I'm going to offer you some easy survivor tips for Dead by Daylight. Now the tips I have to offer are targeted towards typically newer players, as well as solo queue players. So I do believe that beginner players can benefit from this and more seasoned veterans because the footage that I show you is all from my lobbies. So these people have either the same amount of hours as me or they're in the same MMR, so they should know better. And please note this list is in no particular order. So it's not really a ranking list. It's just, here's some things you can do to improve. So let's get into it. Uh, Professor Crow is in the house, about to give you some advice on how to improve as Survivor. Tip number one, at the very beginning of the trial, do not work on gens with another Survivor. If you find a generator, start working on it, but if somebody else comes along, move to another gen. Uh, if the killer comes along, definitely get yourself into position to get into a chase, uh, but pressuring the same generator with a teammate at the very beginning of the trial is not a good strategy. I've seen plenty of times when there are two, three, even four survivors grouped up in the same area. So when the killer is actually patrolling the generators at the beginning, they're going to find all of these generators with no progress on them. They'll eventually find the survivors who are grouped up. And depending on the killer, whether it's Bubba, Huntress, Blight, Nurse, any killer with snowball potential, that can just add pressure to your team at the very beginning of the trial. Split up, do generators separately. Trust me on this. When it comes to healing somebody who just got off the hook, it's always preferable for you just to take a few steps away and hide behind a rock or a wall. Don't heal directly under the hook. There are some exceptions, like if maybe you have the perk will we'll make it, which allows you to heal super fast, or if the teammate has it, it's just a good practice. Just go run behind a wall, run behind a rock, because you'll find that more often than not, the killer will come straight back to the hook. And if you don't get that heal off in time, you're just out in the open and it's not a good spot to be in. Just go hide behind a wall or a rock and increase your chances of getting that heal finished. This is a situation you'll find yourself in quite a bit with tip number three, hook saves during end game. So let's say you've fixed all the generators, maybe you have the Exegate 99, or maybe you have it even open and there's somebody on a hook and you there's maybe three of you left, one of them's on the hook or all four of you, that's great. You need at least two healthy survivors to get that person off the hook, generally speaking, unless you're dealing with somebody like a, a one-shot killer like Billy or Bubba. You need at least two healthy survivors, have to swarm the hook. More often than not, the killer will wait to hit you or the other person. But what needs to happen is one of you has to take a hit and the survivor that did not get hit has to run in and get the hook save immediately. And the person who did get hit by the killer, you just run towards the gate because you've done your part. This can be really rough to coordinate during solo queue, but that's what you need to do. And I'm showing some footage here that shows how it's done. And in solo queue, it'll be easier to have the door open already. Sometimes that's outside of your control. It's a simple strategy, but you'd be surprised at how often people fumble it, especially in solo queue, because you're not, you don't have access to comms. This one's kind of killer specific, but do not cleanse versus plague. If you do, make sure it's in the corner of the map or in an area where maybe multiple generators have already been fixed. If you cleanse frequently, the plague can snowball among the best killers in the game, especially against newcomers. I know it's really rough to be injured for most of the trial, but if you keep cleansing, the plague will just keep getting her power and she can snowball and end chases really quickly while in power. So avoid, 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 avoid cleansing at all costs. Tip number five, do not farm off hook. Survivors have 70 seconds before moving on to the next hook state. It may be tempting if a hooked survivor is really close 
But all you're doing is giving the killer incentive to come back if you go and grab that person off hook right away. I suggest you wait some time before you grab each person off the hook. I suggest fixing a generator for at least 30, 40 seconds, then go for the save. And also keep an eye on that heads up display. Do you have multiple people working on generators? Do you have multiple people with nothing showing? The people with nothing showing, that person might be going for the hook save. And if you have the perk kindred or if the person on hook has kindred, you'll know the answer to that. <laughs> but a good rule of thumb, just use your judgment. If multiple people are fixing generators and nobody is coming off of that fixing generator state, then it's up to you. You go get the hook save. Uh, but if you're injured, like that, that opens up new possibilities. Maybe it's not it's not your place to unhook. It's best to be healthy when you get that unhook. So wait some time, make sure you're healthy, then go for the hook save. Don't grab them right away. Tip number six, you can see how many times your teammates have been hooked. If you need to, give the killer a free down so that your teammate on death hook can either make a clean escape and hopefully get healed. I see this all the time in my solo queue games. I'll be getting tunneled and none of my teammates want to run into harm's way to give me some time. Your team will always have a better chance of escaping and fixing all the generators if you have all four survivors in the trial. If somebody is getting tunneled out, you really need to just get in the way, go down, see what happens. Maybe the killer will just pick you up right away, put you on a hook, and then that person can get to safety, hopefully get healed, and you've just increased the chances that your team will escape. But you know what will decrease that 100% is if you let that person get downed. Be a good teammate. Don't be afraid to sacrifice a hook state. The next tip, you will face a lot of legions, especially when you first start playing Dead by Daylight. This will sound crazy, but do not heal versus legion. Legion's a very common killer to face when you're new to Dead by Daylight. Even veteran players struggle with playing against legion. The best way to beat legion and many killers for that matter is just to split up, stay injured and fix generators. Since legion is an M1 killer with no built-in mechanics to close chases, like a ranged attack or a rush, like Blight or Wesker has, anyone being chased by Legion can buy a lot of time just by vaulting through a window or dropping a pallet. Split up, don't heal, fix generators, and you will escape Legion way more than you currently are right now. Stop regressing generators before you unhook a fellow survivor. Let's say you're going for an unhook and let's say that person's next to a generator that's regressing. Maybe the killer kicked it, Maybe they have a perk that activated the regression. Before getting the hook save, go in there. I believe it takes about five seconds to fix a bit of that generator to stop those little sparks from flying and then go for the hook save. The survivor has 70 seconds before they move on to the next hook stage. There are some scenarios where it's actually a strong play to completely fix the generator and then grab the person off hook. The reason being, the killer will likely come back to the hook right after you unhook the teammate. And that will just apply pressure to you and that injured teammate, as well as that generator that isn't fixed yet. That's a little bit of an advanced strategy. In my solo queue games, I see this quite often where I'm thinking to myself, please, please stop that gen, stop that gen. They come and unhook me and the killer comes back and the gen keeps regressing. It's, it's so frustrating. Tip number nine, stop looting chests. Looting chests will always be a detriment to your team. Items are cheap enough. Just bring in a strong med kit or toolbox every single trial, as long as you're using your main survivor that has a stockpile of items. The only time I loot a chest is if the game is almost over, we've got all the gens fixed, and I just want some extra blood points before the trial ends. More often than not, you're going to loot a garbage item, uh, enjoy your brown med kit, your brown toolbox. Your time is better spent fixing a generator. Go fix a generator, don't loot that chest. And finally, tip number 10, stop cleansing totems. But Crow, I'm running inner healing. Okay, that's a decent perk, but are there are better builds you could be running. Cleansing totems doesn't help you in progressing the game, AKA fixing generators and opening an exegate. You're potentially harming your team in multiple ways. You're wasting time for your, you and your team. 
Uh, the killer could have a devastating slowdown perk like Hex Pentimento, which brings repair speeds to a crashing halt, and you just make their life a lot easier to light those up. Some survivors cleanse totems with the mindset they're doing so to avoid Noed. But even if the killer is running Noed, it's so easy to find the Noed totem that when it activates, it's simply not worth it. Plus, you'd have to cleanse five totems to ensure the killer doesn't get Noed, and there's no guarantee that they are even using Noed. And more often than not, you probably won't even get all five of the totems. And cleansing a totem, a doll totem, by default, takes 14 seconds. And in a game of seconds, that could be the difference between fixing the last generator before the killer regresses it using a perk like Pop Goes the Weasel, Surge, Pain Resonance, and several others. Stop cleansing totems. Stop thinking that you're denying the killer no ed. If they have no ed, let that one person take a hit to activate no ed, and then go find it. You practically get you practically get GPS coordinates for no ed. Anyway, you, you see the aura, go cleanse it then. So there you have it. There's 10 easy survivor tips for improving your overall gameplay. If you eliminate some of these bad habits, start incorporating some of these good habits, you'll find yourself escaping a lot more. I know that solo queue can be really tough and I know most of us play that way, but I really hope that this guide helps. And if you find it does help, be sure to like and drop a comment and share with some of your friends, any of your friends who need to get better, you know, give them a subtle hint. Hey, this Professor Crow came up with this guide on how to improve as survivor. Maybe you should have a look at this and so you can improve so we can escape together. Hooray. But anyway, if you like this video, be sure to like, um, drop a comment. Let me know any, anything that I missed. I know that Dead by Daylight is a very simple game but it's got some complex mechanics. So if you have a, a really good habit you want to share with me and the rest of the community, let us know in the comments. And if you wanna see more videos like this, uh, be sure to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.